Bandwidth for first updates now is supported by Animark. Are you competition ready? Go to Animark.com and keep your team inspired. First Updates Now is brought to you by viewers like you. Fun relies on the generous support of our fans in order to continue to keep creating content. Please consider donating, giving bits, or subscribing. Subscribe for a few bucks a month or for free through Twitch Prime. And don't forget that our subscribers get 5x chance to win on all giveaways. Ladies and gentlemen, robot men and women, welcome back to FTC Live. We will be recapping the West Super Regionals awards and finals matches over the next hour-ish. Reporting for FTC Live, I'm Ethan. I'm Nathan. I'm Shashir. I'm Olivia. That's Eric. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Nick. Uh, I also wanted to add something before we get started. I wanted to send a personal thank you to the whole entire West Super Regional community. For those that have not been involved with FTC Live and don't know, all the information that we have for these shows came from teams who came from teams and people who uh, helped us out in the Discord, are watching this show right now, and are on our um, staff, so to say. Uh, the West community was very receptive to Ethan and my calls for help, and they really helped us gather all of the information that made this show possible. So, uh, Ethan? Yeah, if you have any questions that you'd like to read, that you would like to be read during our Q&A segment near the end of the show, please tag at First Updates Now and type your question into the chat. If we don't get to your question, we'll try to answer it in the chat after the show. And tonight, we have an awesome giveaway brought to you by Rev Robotics, who will have some booths at the FTC and FRC at both championships with awesome challenges. You can win prizes, so be sure, stop by, tell them you love FTC Live, and you want more giveaways in the future. Now let's bring on our producer, Tyler Olds, to provide us with some more details on how to win. Thanks a lot, Nick. So if you guys are interested in winning this awesome module by Rev Robotics, a servo power module, uh, you got to make sure you check this out, guys. Uh, Rev Robotics has been nice enough to donate this for this show here. Servo power module enables your team to use high-powered RC servos and applications where a robot controller cannot directly provide adequate power. Uh, if you haven't tried these out, guys, you got to take a look. Like right now, if you don't have one, pick one up for your team. I know you got a chance to win, but you should also pick one up for your team as well for either this season or next season. If you want to win, here's the big thing, guys. You have to either follow or subscribe to First Updates Now. Click that little follow button on top of your screen. Or for a few bucks a month, you can subscribe. Or get this, you can subscribe for free through Twitch Prime. So if you have an Amazon Prime account or your parents have an Amazon Prime account, you can go ahead and subscribe to First Updates Now. Not only do you get some awesome emotes to use, but you get five times chance to win on this giveaway, guys. Five times luck to do that. So near the end of the show, we are going to give you a special keyword. You're going to spam that keyword in as much as you want, and we're going to go from there. Uh, keep in mind, guys, that we also do try to run a very clean community here on First Updates Now, so we please make sure you exhibit your gracious professionalism at all times, and good luck to everybody uh, on winning the Rev Servo Power Module. All right, so now we're going to move into the award segment, and we're starting with the biggie, the Inspire Award. The Inspire Award third place winner from the West Super Regional was Team 8367 Acme Robotics from Grass Valley, California. Acme Robotics does a lot to impact the rural, rural parts of Northern California, hence their Connect Award win. And robot-wise, they have an intricate autonomous, which could get three glyphs on the far side. The second place Inspire winner was Team 5667, the Robo Miners from Park City, Utah. Robo Miners were also on the I event Winning Alliance as the second pick. The Inspire Award winner was Team 8496, Heat It Up and Keep It Cool from Newhall, New New California. Olivia is on Heat It Up and Keep It Cool, so um, she could give us more insight into their Inspire win. Also, it should be noted that Heat It Up and Keep It Cool is the only West Super Regional team to win two consecutive Super Regional Inspire Awards. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, I am Olivia Smalley. I am the head of the outreach program for FTC Team 8496. To describe a little bit about us and the Inspire Award, every year our team aims to get the Inspire Award and we make it one of our biggest goals. We work really hard for this award throughout the year and we make sure to balance our robot and our outreach program equally. For example, our outreach program starts in May and it's going until now. Some of our work includes 
um, trying to engage our community and bringing them into STEM and FIRST Robotics by working alongside community partners and sponsors that have the same mission as us to reach out and create new opportunities. We also have a strong global outreach program mentoring teams around the world, such as Malawi, Kosovo, Hong Kong, China, and soon Haiti. But we are also known for mentoring nationally and locally. We mentor junior FLL, FLL, FTC, and FRC teams on everything from robot to research to a team's mission statement and philosophy. Um, one notable thing we have done this season is actually our elementary school curriculum, which we will be talking a lot about at Houston. Um, we had a lot of success with this, and we're going to be actually receiving the Presidential Volunteer Service Award because we've, as a team, we've put in at least individually 250 hours on this project alone. Um, as an outreach program, we have over 2,000 hours of outreach and at least 400 hours individually. We've reached over to 5,000 people, and I would add in more about our outreach, but there's just a lot to talk about there. As for the robot game, uh, the thing that makes the thing that for our team is that we want to keep it original. We don't want to copy other robots because that doesn't teach us anything. And this is extremely important to us. For example, as many of you probably know, we are the Section Cup robot team. Uh, as many of you guys will ask, why and how? Well, how our vacuum system operates through valves and two vacuum cups. When one individual vacuum cups presses, presses against the top surface of a glyph, the air inside the vacuum cup is expelled through the open valve. We then close the valve with a servo, allowing us to maintain the suction inside the cup, which allows us to keep the glyph attached to the vacuum cup. When we want to release the glyph, we simply reopen the valve and let the air rush back to the, into the cup, allowing us to deliver it wherever we want. And the reason why we chose this is because it... Uh-oh. ...top surface uh, uh, that's not being disturbed. Hey, Libya, can you say that one but, more time? Yeah. <laughs> oh, which part? Your mic cut on the last part. Oh, the when we want to release the glyph? Sure, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Say yeah. That. That's right. Oh, okay, so when we want to release the glyph, we simply reopen the valve and let the air rush back into the cup. Um, yeah, that allows us to deliver it wherever we want. And by having this type of system, we can always grab cubes because there's a top surface no matter what. So, yeah, there, <laughs> there you go. Thank awesome. you. You All can right, definitely so. say that robot sucks. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that multiple times. So original, right? Yeah, very much. <laughs> All right, uh, Eric, take it away. Yeah, moving on to the Think Award. So the third place Think Award winner was 417 Skid from Woodenville, Washington. And the second place Think Award winner was 8367 Acme Robotics. And the Think Award winner was Team 5667 Robo Miners from Park City, Utah. According to Valentin on the FTC Discord, their notebook has a detailed section with all of their math and calculations related to torque analysis and the mathematical physics of all of the moving robot parts. They also have a super detailed outreach section. Their notebook is very neat and organized so that the judges can easily find any part of the notebook with minimal effort. Their whole season was built off of the idea of learning from everything that they do. Into the Connect Award, our third place Connect Award winner was Team 4628 Suitbots from Monteravia, California. They focus a lot on their outreach, on connecting with professionals and finding solutions for problems. And an example of this is when they worked with data scientists at Ticketmaster to help perfect their dual color detection under any circumstance, no matter what the lighting conditions are, which is definitely a big issue in a few environments and lighting circumstances. The Especially second place. Sorry, especially an issue in Houston when they go into the um, baseball stadium. So oh, yeah. If they make definitely. it that far to be playing in the finals, that that, uh, that autonomous yeah. will definitely be uh, helpful. Yes. The second place Connect Award winner was Team 7593, the TigerBots from Belmont, California. TigerBots also does a lot of interfacing with companies, including Bishop Weiscarver, NASA, and AV Aviso. I don't know. <laughs> they also do work with the Girl Scouts of Northern California to help them achieve their robotics badges. The Connect Award winner at the South Super Regional was Team 8367, Acme Robotics. According to Kellen from their team, quote, we have an amazing engineering notebook that we put a ton of time into, about the same or maybe more than the robot. Um, and they do a ton of outreach to local tech companies and have gotten multiple mentors through their outreaches. 
Um, they've also hosted an FLL summer camp and are planning for another one this summer. Um, in addition, they partnered with the Economic Resource Council in their county um, to write a grant and to, to start FLL teams in every middle school in that county. So very, very impressive stuff. Okay, for the Innovate Award, the third place Innovate Award winner was 12599 Overcharge from Portland, Oregon, and the second place Innovate Award winner was 2856 Tesseract from Seattle, Washington. The Innovate Award winner was 4042 Non-Standard Deviation, also from Seattle, Washington. Yes, yeah, so if we can uh, get that um, video up, Tyler, uh, no sound. Um, so non-standard deviation has created a very, very innovative and cool robot for this year. So as uh, we're going to see a little bit later in this reveal video, I think they're just showing off the basic part of their robot first. Um, we're going to see that their robot splits into two. Two thirds of the robot basically parks in front of the crypto box in the last third and travels out and into the glyph pile to collect and bring glyphs back to the core of the robot. The core uh, then takes the glyphs in and automatically detects the glyphs color and places the uh, glyphs into the proper columns. It's, yeah. it's the feat of engineering. Last year you had, let's see, who was it? I'm blanking. Inconceivable. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> this year I think that's, that title definitely goes to non-standard deviation. Like this robot is a work of art. Definitely, One of the things definitely. I haven't seen any of their competition videos. One of the things I'd have to ask them or someone who's seen them, uh, maybe Nick can speak to this, is they only, I mean, I say only, but I'm pretty sure it's a, it says in the review video, travel seven and a half feet out. So I wonder if they've had any issues with uh, glyphs being pushed too far away. Yeah, they had a little bit of trouble with that at West. And I think, and I hope to see at Houston that they've gotten a little bit better at it. It seemed like it was still hard for them con to control and get like that multi-glyph auto and do a lot of those other things. But yeah, when the glyph pile sort of got late in the match, they really had better hope that they had their crypto box filled up. And uh, yeah, definitely. Another thing that I noticed about this team is that after last year, after Inconceivable put out the reveal and after they were a team, first sort of became a bit stricter on this kind of robot. I'm not sure exactly what they said, but there were a few things that were mentioned that basically tried to limit something like this. But uh, Inc uh, but Lone Standard Deviation was really able to work around this and still create such an innovative robot. And I think that really needs to be said. Yeah, I think the biggest thing um, with the creation of two like different parts of the robot was that um, first wants to make sure that teams aren't taking up the whole field with wires running everywhere. I think the That's biggest true. thing is you got to make sure that your the robots are physically connected in some sort of strong way so that if another robot were to run into you, your robot wouldn't split in half. Um, and I think as we can see here that it looks like a pretty strong connection between the, uh, the base third and the um, suction part of the um, robot. Yeah, definitely. Sure. Something that I've noticed kind of a little bit in Vex is they have some robots that are really defense-based and are just giant walls. And I think First definitely wants to stay away from that in some of the rules as well. It oh, is wow, really their cool. style. <laughs> yeah. They're funny when they break, though. Giant wall <laughs> robots are really funny when they break. <laughs> okay. Do we want to talk a little bit about the design award? Yeah, so... The third place design award winner was a 4133 Fusion from Helena, Montana. And the second place was 9804 Bomb Squad from Los Angeles, California. Uh, Bomb Squad's robot is a U-drive. It maneuvers very fast and has a two-wheeled intake that allows the glyph mechanism to be fast, efficient, simple, and robust. And the design award winner was Team 7696 RSF Singularity from Ranch Rancho Santa Fe, California. Singularity 3D printed their entire robot and they had a very unique relic mechanism. In 3D printing their entire robot, the team X used extensive CAD and 3D modeling to design their robot. It's yeah, I got I got to say seeing that that robot RSFs was just it was a work of art like um, the way that they had just they'd created it so efficiently. But I, I think another real shout out has to go to Bomb Squad because that robot was so beautiful. Like the way that they made their U drive work, like have that lateral motion with only three motors is just something that like was unparalleled in anything that I've seen um, in, in any competition so far. Yeah, for sure. Bomb Squad's robot is so pretty and it's really, really fast for only being two motors forward and one right? side. Yeah. Base. Like so, looks like we've got sorry. Um 7696 reveal video up. 
Oh, yes, awesome. yes. That's All right. right. Oh, we hope it is. Um, <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. This video is actually pretty cool. They basically show some of the building as well as just like um, what it does. And if we, I, I'm not sure, I don't remember this video exactly, but if we get to see, ah, yes, there's a, there's drivetrain. Like you can see the individual modules over here. Like everything is printed. Everything is. is like made so robust, even though it's printed. That's what I think is like the amazing part here. Do you know yeah. what they print out of? Um, I am not sure, unfortunately. I've heard, I'm not, don't quote me on this, but I've heard that one of their parents, one of their mentors, actually owns a company that deals oh, with 3D go. printing. But, yeah, wow. just on camera, it does not really look like um, your classic, what, uh, ABS, I think, isn't that what? Definitely, it doesn't, it doesn't look like that. Yeah, it doesn't it's look really like pretty. Yeah. That thing yeah. is insane. For sure. Uh, all right. All right. So, do we want to move into the motivator award, or want to check out the? Yeah, let's let's look at the robot yeah. for a second. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely. So, Tower, we that's uh, an jump back to that. Yeah, it's yeah, got I an just interesting wanna... claw base because it solves the problem that a lot of claws have, which is it grabs the first cliff and lifts it up, and then grabs the second one right underneath it, as opposed to a lot of them have to grab one and then stack it, and the, on yeah. the other one, and then drive back, drive back to the crypto box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty smart. And oh yeah, we gotta see the relic arm. This thing is like you gotta see this. It's super cool. <laughs> Whoa, it's like a yeah. So it's it's awesome. basically it's three D printed and it only has one degree of freedom. So like it wraps up into like a, a loop, but then when it goes out, it's like it's just straight. And then their claw, it they don't lift like other teams. It's just it's a passive claw that can um, like f f fold when they go over the um, the wall, and then Whoa. it just comes right back down. It's just oh, so cool. Man. That's a nice robot. Awesome. Yeah. See, it just it just pushes right past the wall. Yeah, that is an insane. That and they can is lift so up. Solid. Oh, that's that's solid. I mean, it definitely like uh, to be candid, it's definitely not the most efficient or the fastest system, but it really it solves a problem in such a simple, like a very very unique way, and I think that's something that really needs to be noted. Yeah, definitely, it's really kind of the essence of the design award. It's such a great robot. Yeah. I mean, I'm not I'm not too sure how. Well, it worked, but I could definitely see them being uh, thought of for innovate too. I, I, if the robot works well, um, mm -hmm. then innovate, yeah. But no, it's definitely a very well designed robot. All right, so let's move on to our motivate award. So the third place motivate award winner was 8176 Steelhead from Hood River, Oregon. The second place winner was 8372 Trial and Error from Medford, Oregon. And the motivate award winner was. 8949 Gifted Gears from Portland, Oregon. Um, it's an Oregon sweep. On it's the an Oregon award. sweep. Also, is it Oregon or Oregon? It's Oregon. Oregon. Yep, definitely. Oregon. Okay, <laughs> wasn't sure. <laughs> Gifted Gears has focused on motivating people and spreading first on an international level. They've connected with teams and people from Chicago, India, and France. They've gone to these countries and they've begun creating an interest in first in new countries outside of the U.S. Yeah, I, definitely. Awesome. And um, just because I'm very close, actually, I just had a scrimmage with Gifted Gears like 30 minutes ago. So I, nice. I've been been talking to them a lot, and they've really like they've they've impacted they've improved the impact uh, uh, internationally in such a large scale. Um, one of the things that I like to see is that every year, um, in their pit, they basically have a map of the world, and then they have little pins and string from Portland, from where we are, um, to everywhere that they've reached. And that map is always it's just full of string to like to every continent, obviously except Antarctica. But like it's just it's so <laughs> cool to see how far their impact is. Is. And um, it, it really, it, it, I was just so happy when um, both when Oregon swept, um, because obviously Oregon represent, woo, but also yeah. when, when Gifted Gears won this award, it just, it just meant a lot to me. Yeah, that's that pretty great. Awesome. Sounds like they're a great team to win, motivate. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And some of that international outreach is just incredible, and putting it all together has to be so much work. <laughs> yeah, and going to like multiple different continents. Like, that has to be incredibly taxing on their program. Mm -hmm. That's really impressive. I'm, I'm wondering sure. uh, how much that costs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I definitely have to ask. I'm, I'm sure it's not cheap, but they, they really have a real dedication to what they're trying to do. They, they have a very focused goal, and by, by doing this, 
it basically does cost a lot, but even by doing that, they're really able to, to achieve their goal. Yeah, I, I really think that's what matters. Yeah. Um, all right, do you guys want to move on? Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, we should go on to the Control Award. Okay. <laughs> the Control Award third place winner was 8610, I'm not sure how to say the name. Tober Tech. To- okay, from Lake... Yeah, it's robot backwards, Tober. Oh, okay. From <laughs> Lake... Lake Oswego. Os- Oswego, okay, Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> and the second place control winner was 776, Loose Screws from Portland, Oregon. And our control award winner was team 9112, the Skeleton Crew from Salt Lake City, Utah. They created their very own CV program from scratch, and it didn't work as consistently as they hoped, but their custom CV allowed them to learn a lot about programming and in the vast extent that FTC programming can become. I'm going to talk about this firsthand. It can really get crazy. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah, so basically what, what, when I was talking to Skeleton Crew, I talked a little bit at, soup, uh, at the reg- at Super Regionals, and um, uh, what, they, what they did was they, they, bas- they didn't want to use things like OpenCV or anything of that sort. They basically just they, they went from scratch, and they were able to create this. Um, it, it did have its up and ups and downs sometimes they weren't able to get um um get like for example the jewel or sometimes they weren't able to get the key column but overall it really like i think like what they learned and like what what creating this program taught them was just way more than having a, a working or like a high scoring autonomous um oh, yeah yes yeah, um, yeah, so basically another thing that we wanted to talk about here was um, some of the uh, more consistent or high-scoring autonomouses in this tournament. Um, and so there were multiple autonom- – there were quite a few teams that did um, multi-glyph autos. Um, I know that um, team 6929 um, Data Force, uh, they had a three-glyph. Um, I'm, I believe Redneck Robotics had a three-glyph on Nier, but I'm not 100% sure because we only went against them when they were going far. And they always beat us. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, and also um, another team was um, Rise of Hephaestus. I believe they also had a, a pretty good um, autonomous. Um, um, and of course, um, not to toot my own horn or anything, but my team, 12808 revamped. Um, we also made sure that we were very consistently able to score um, these two to three glyphs uh, in, in autonomous. And um, by doing that, um, we were actually able to create a very, very consistent three glyph auto, one of the most consistent, I would say, in this tournament. Um, and by, I, I think that, I think that uh, in a larger scale, the reason that we did this autonomous. I, I think that's something that I would like to go into is because like everyone knows that this game has a low cap, right? Everyone knows that 628 points is where you're at. And then if you get to 628 points, you're sort of you're sort of done. Um, and uh, after we knew that from the very beginning of our season, that our goal was to get that um, 628 points. And by doing that, um, I was able to um, and by by doing that, we were we were really able to um, uh, by doing a multi glyph auto, we were able to break that cap. And I think that's what a lot of teams are going for. And by by doing that one glyph drop off um, in the beginning, and then going for the other two, they're able to ensure that they can get that eighty five points, but then add on to their score, uh, allowing for extreme consistency. So uh, another thing to add is um, someone from the chat. OP head head or whatever um, <laughs> said, said that they spoke with Skeleton Crew at uh, WSR and they were incredibly f- friendly and willing to share their autonomous and vision processing strategy. So I would suggest reaching out to them in social media if you guys uh, don't know how to do vision, uh, want to look into creating your own CV program. So that team was uh, 9112 Skeleton Crew from Salt Lake City, Utah. If you forgot, um, yeah, it's it's great when teams are really willing to share and help others out i don't really like when teams are uh when our little uh snobby and uh for lack of a better way to say it and don't want to share what they're working on i think uh we all are here to learn so helping others is great um so let's move on to our promote award winner our promote award winner was uh 56 67 robo miners so let's see their promote video and yes to audio. So my favorite thing about robotics is definitely the real world experience that you get. As like a female 
female engineer, I feel really like supported and welcomed into like the first community. There's an incredible amount of diversity. I get to meet this whole new community of people that are just like me. No matter how hopeless a situation may seem, you can always spring back from it and it teaches you how to problem solve. The variety of skills that it teaches you. It teaches you engineering <laughs> skills, but on top of that, it teaches you how to pitch yourself to, to judges and, and to other people and other corporations for fundraising. It teaches you how to write a business plan. It does so much for you beyond even you know just learning how to make robots. It's just such a great feeling to know that people are going to be there for you on no matter your background or where you're from. It's just a great experience, and I just wish that the world would be more. All right, All right, so yeah, 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 let's jump right into our uh, division finals. Yeah, um, definitely. So, uh, Eric, you want to go into the yeah. Olympic division? So, on the uh, blue lines, on the blue line, uh, can you guys hear me? Um, yep. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> Yeah, Blue Alliance was made up of uh, Team 4216, Rise of Faces, San Diego, California, 9899, Black Diamond Robotics from Fort Collins, Colorado, and Team 417, Skid from Woodinville, Washington. And forming the Red Alliance was Team 9804, the Bomb Squad from Los Angeles, California, Team 9781, Gravity Check from Anchorage, Cal Alaska. <laughs> And finally, Team 8496, heat it up and keep it cool. Uh, <laughs> let's roll the Olympic yeah. finals, too. <laughs> yeah, there is no audio. Um... Yeah, so, um, I mean, I think we can just start the analysis over here. I mean, um, you can see that uh, Bomb Squad's alliance actually was the number four seeded alliance, so they beat out number one, so that was quite a bit of a big upset. Um, but over here, you can see 9899 and 4216 both have those multi-glyph autos that they're trying to go into. Both of them, I think, are three. I can't tell exactly. Um, oh, two. Well, 9899 <laughs> tried for three. They only got two. But um, you could really see that this played an advantage in their final score because they were already able to not only um, score extra points, obviously, but they were also able to really get, um, get an advantage in the scoring of the crypto box because that was already in a cipher pattern. Thankfully. Yeah. Yeah. That's when you kind of have that risk of going for multi-glyphs is will it land in a cipher pattern or not? And you lose time or game time. It's really kind of very interesting. Unless you can solve that problem in software, which dark I mean, matter. Personally, I'd rather have the extra 15 to 30 points and take the extra oh, yeah, three seconds sure. to pull the blocks <laughs> out and then put them back in. Yeah, um, for sure. But yeah, if you're like gluten free and you're running like four or five <laughs> or even six glyph, um, then you're really running a risk. Uh -huh. Well, you so either I mean, need a way to index them or you need to actually like get the right ones, which is going to take you that extra time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as you can see already over here, like Rise is already like almost done. They have 11 glyphs on far. Like that level of efficiency, I really think is unparalleled in, in this tournament, especially in, in our championship, in the South championship. Um, and I mean, that, there's a reason why they're ranked first. Um, you can, you can already see they're going for their relic with 52 seconds remaining. Um, yeah. so and it's really um, interesting. Something that's interesting about rise is they went for a tank drive over a McKenna so they can yeah. go over the balancing stone, which is a really, it's something that's different. And we haven't really seen a whole lot of in FTC this year. Yeah. So, uh, also, Eric, Kind of the main decision making behind that was we just wanted to like have the fastest possible drivetrain with like the most mobility around the field. And so with the mechanism drive, we were seeing like possible complications of maybe driving over balancing stones or trying to um, like just move faster. And so we ended up going with the six wheel tank drive. And yeah. Yeah, and I remember seeing you guys in matches on the Olympic division and back at the NorCal championship, where you had quite a few of those, like, last minute, let's park really quick. And it seemed like your drivers were really good at it. Yeah, that seemed to it, be a decision that played off well. Our driver, I mean, it helps that our uh, main driver is a god, but uh, the drive, the <laughs> drive really helps. also helps. I yeah, for that, sure. There are a lot of teams who have trouble sliding side to side with the cannon drive. It's kind of part of it. Yeah. 
Uh, another thing that I noticed about Rise is that um, their relic mechanism, uh, they have like, I think four, is it four or five slides, Eric? Um, I believe it's five. Yeah, so they can reach over anything, and I think that's super cool. Like, if you look at them, they don't try to, but sometimes, uh, even when there are no glyphs in front, they, they go they go their full extension, and they're almost reaching past the mat, the relic mat, <laughs> um, which is something that I think was is just super cool. It's, it's definitely an oversight that my team had. Uh, we never even thought about that to add more slides, and now it's, um, we, we, could, we, we, were, we figured this out too late, but like... Yeah, see, I mean, you can see that their slide isn't extended all the way, even with that one glyph there. It was, it was, it was they have plenty of space, and yeah, I think that's something sure. that's that that these small kinds of um, efficiency ad additions that are done by teams like Festus, um, they really contribute uh, greatly to their the level of play. Because once you get to such a high level of play, there's not much you can do. Um, but by doing making these small adjustments, I think um, teams like Festus is able to to truly um, rise above the challenge. <laughs> rise above the challenge. Uh, <laughs> hold on. Yes, all the dead jokes. Another really interesting re relic mechanism I don't think we'll see in matches tonight is heated up and keep it cools. Because if <laughs> I remember right, it's drawer slides powered by a tape measure, right? Yes, you are correct. <laughs> yeah. It's really, it, I haven't seen another one like that, which is really kind of an interesting use. Instead of a traditional spindle, It's. I feel like it'd pre probably be a lot less maintenance. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. I know we've taken inspiration from past years, especially from Rescue, when we saw those tape measures <laughs> that lifted the robots onto the, uh, you know, platform area. Mm -hmm. We thought about that, and then we're like, hey, that could work for our, you know, relic delivery system. And boy, I love that relic delivery system. <laughs> yes, it is very smooth. Okay, let's see here. Uh, I'd, I'd like to ask a quick question to someone in the chat from for, to G Quick One. What are your nightmares with tape measures in on FTC bots? They're amazing. I've actually never used one on a bot, but I've seen them used so many times. They're great. <laughs> just, just my uh, opinion. Yeah, so I think one of the like one of the best things about um, the division finals in um, Olympic is that you really you you saw we saw quite a few robots that were unique in the sense that they weren't the traditional intake flipper. Um, I think the main the main ones that we can talk about here are Skid and um, Heated Up. Um, they were both, uh, I believe, one of them was the second pick of the first lines, one of them second pick of the fourth lines, and both of them um, had very unique systems. Skid, honestly, um, that. That team has perfected their um, the the what's it called the diamond drive with the four omnis. Um, like they yeah. did that last year as well. They were just so quick, and even this year, like they're able to do so well even without um, um, even without that basic intake. Um, and I think that a lot of that comes down to the fact that they're so maneuverable. Yeah, for sure. And like even autonomous with that X drive style tends to drift a lot. I did some work with it last year, and it's. It's really impressive that they've managed to make a multi-glyph, or sorry, excuse me, an 85-point autonomous that is as consistent as it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Guys, if you didn't see in the chat, there's now a straw poll uh, tape measure for tape measures on FTC bots, so you should fill that out. Yes, do it. Do right now, go to the Cascade Effect Finals. A cascade, me, division. cascade Division Finals. <laughs> Going a few years back there. All right. Um, so... I believe that we had uh, what's it called? Um, we had quite a, we had a pretty 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 very high scoring uh, division finals. I think um, I'll first start out with the um, first seed. We got um, in, in the beginning we had team uh, one two five nine nine overcharged um, from Portland, um, our sister team actually. And in a, the first pick was us. Woo! Um, team twelve eight zero eight revamped robotics, also from Portland, Oregon. And our second pick was team eighty three sixty seven Acme from Grass Valley, California. And then over on the Blue Alliance, you can see um, 724 Redneck Robotics 1 from Sun River, Montana. 6929, six, rather, Data Force from Littleton, Colorado. And 5667 The Robo Miners from Park City, Utah. Let's check out the Cascade Finals match number two. Um, well, while we're getting uh, while we're getting the match set up, I'd just like to talk a little bit about the names that we see in this um, in this tournament. Like, like we see Rednecks, we see Data Force. Um, both of these teams were at um, New Hampshire last year for the Festival of Champions. Both of these teams 
won their world championship. Actually, they won different world championships. Data Force won uh, the uh, uh, yep. Data Force Saint won Louis. St. Louis, and uh, Rednecks won uh, uh, Houston. And by, yes. by this like this alliance was just like pretty insane because these two teams um, really were able to work together very very efficiently. I feel. Yeah, for sure. So you can see Rubber Miners over there with their three glyph autonomous. I can't remember if it scores three this one, but we'll see in just a second. It's a very it, there's another really unique mechanism that we don't see very much of at all. Tracks as an intake is definitely different. Um, yeah. So one of the things that we're mainly going to be talking about um, in uh, well, one of the things we're going to be talking about in this um, in this match, especially, is the driving style of uh, Redneck Robotics. Um, I'm I'm a little bit biased because that's my robot right over there, but I'll try to be as unbiased as possible when I talk about. See, as you can see, they're like they're they're hitting us. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, you, can, you can see the rather aggressive driving style of, of Rednecks, um, and you can uh, I think I'm not going to say whether this was this was cool or not um oh oh this is this is the part that i want to i want to talk about they there you go boom there we go ah all right yeah that's, uh, that's <laughs> overcharged that's our captain they're falling over that was that was a re that was a moment for us that really really um that sat very poorly as you can imagine um and the reason that that sat poorly was that um it's not as if they were being passive. It's not as if rednecks were just trying to collect their glyphs. There were plenty of other glyphs in other areas of the field, but they were very they were making a concerted effort to get into um, Overcharge's bot when they were in their own safe zone, when they were scoring their glyphs, and play such an aggressive game. Um, I'm not going to say whether this game was uh, egregious or not egregious, but I will say that in the finals match two of the West Super Regionals, um, Rednecks, uh, I mean, yeah, Redneck Robotics did get a verbal warning from the uh, head referee, Mark Edelman. Um, so you can take that as you may. Um, but I definitely think that the style that they were driving is very different um, not and um, quite, quite, quite aggressive. Tyler, yeah, it's we, definitely. Uh, Tyler, can we skip back to right before they were flipped? I think that was right at the beginning. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have a, I have a different video in this show doc. If you want, that's just the clip. Um, oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, perfect. Yes. Perfect. So it's kind of interesting. You can, it's up in the air whether Redneck flipped them or they flipped themselves on Redneck. It's I'd kind say of, it's, to me as a viewer, it looks quite aggressive for this style of game. Yeah, for sure. And it's as you can see, kind of, Sorry, Ethan. I was just saying. My last point is they're Rednecks all the way over past the uh, red tape they're all like almost at the balancing stone so yeah it's quite possible that what they were doing there is they were trying to uh make it so that the red alliance actually had to drive around them yes. and have a longer cycle time yeah, yeah but very much so very because much. of the skirmish they ended up flipping mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another thing that I think is pretty cool to notice over here is very interesting is um where the glyphs are um if you look all the glyphs are near the Red Alliance, right? And that, I think, like, it doesn't seem like, if you're watching the match, it's not like Redneck is turning off their intake, pushing the glyphs into that area, and then starting to intake. No, they're, they're going for their cycles. But I think uh, the strategy that they're playing is actually to move glyphs into uh, a, a, a huge disadvantage for the Red Alliance. Because, I mean, we tried, for, I, I don't know if we tried for the Relic here, but, oh yeah, we did. We did try for the Relic. We couldn't get it. Like if there were there were like four rows of glyphs over there. Like there was no way that we could have gotten that. Um, but like by playing this, um, and another thing that I noticed was that the glyph, the pushing penalty of like moving the glyphs weren't called a lot at the West Super Regional. Um, at, at, in Oregon State, basically every single glyph that you pushed outside of the the diamond of the pit was a minor penalty. So like that really what? like stopped teams from doing that, and that's why our intake like we try not to push at all. But um, when you get to when we got to the West Super Regionals, it was sort of a shock for us um, because we realized, hey, nobody cares anymore. Um, <laughs> like pushing the glyphs is nothing; um, it means nothing anymore. So I think that um, that that really um, goes to a larger scale of talking about like how game strategy um, changes based on which tournament you're in. And obviously, I don't think we have enough time to talk about that, but it's just something interesting that I noticed um, based on um, when you move further and further away for your competitions. Yeah, it's really, it's interesting to see how kind of the ref's rulings do change uh, venue to venue even. <laughs> okay, so it's time to start our first giveaway, courtesy of Rev Robotics, for those awesome server power modules. 
If you'd like to be entered, you need to follow or subscribe to Fun First Updates now and enter the keyword REV, R-E-V. Don't forget, the subscribers will get a five times chance to win. And if you'd like to subscribe for free, like you or your parents' Prime account, link you or your parents' Prime account to Prime, blah, 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 to Twitch and click subscribe. We'll do a giveaway in a few minutes, so start spamming Rev in the chat right now. Remember, you only need to type it in once, uh, calling out you, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> you, only get, you only get one entry, no matter how many times you guys type it in. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you only get one well, entry. You can no spam it, why not? Yeah, <laughs> I mean it won't hurt. Yeah, yeah, you can you can spend, but like you're only getting one entry, so yeah. It's always fun to call it Daniel, though. It is. <laughs> okay, do we want to move over to the West Super Regionals finals? I think it's about that time. Sure. Uh, the event finals held uh, the winners from both divisions four, two, one, six, nine, eight, nine, nine, and four, one, seven, championing the Olympic division, while seven, two, four. 6929 and 5667 represented the Cascade Division. Let's queue up finals three. Yeah, so the reason that we chose this match was actually because um, there were some calls which were given um, that um, were a bit were a bit questionable. Like, I'm not going to say that the referees made any bad calls because the referees have a very hard job and they really did perform. Uh, they they were they were they were great. Um, but there was one thing that we noticed. Um, this final match actually gave 80 points in penalties to the Blue Alliance. So that they said that the Red Alliance racked up 80 points of penalties. But like the general consensus of the field, as soon as this match was ended and before the um, the scores were posted, was that the Blue Alliance was being egregious and the Blue Alliance was the one who gave fouls against Red. And so this is something that I'd like to analyze over here. Obviously, um, just for the matches, we, we see that Data Force got their um, three glyph that worked. Um, Rednecks actually, surprisingly, don't have a multi-glyph on far at all. Um, but hey, it still worked out for them, right? Yeah. yeah um, I, I wonder... Sorry, it just Go happened ahead, right Nick. there. I wonder if one of those penalties on red was, uh, as we see, um, 98-99, quickly for like uh, five seconds ago, rammed right into the glyph pile and knocked probably five or six glyphs over. I think they already had two in their possession. Yeah. Um, if, I, if I remember correctly, the uh, penalties were for 98-99, uh, scoring two, or scoring one while they were holding three. So oh, I, yes, I believe... I noticed that. Oh, I, I, oh. I believe they had yep. one stuck in their intake, and then they scored one in the crypto box. So oh, I wasn't sure. I, I haven't. I, I can't if I remember find... correctly, that's what the penalties were for. I haven't been able yeah. to find the scoring breakdown. So. Yes, well, I guess kind of. I mean, Eric is the one we can trust over here, right? Yes, I would say Eric. We <laughs> yeah. can definitely trust. I, I remember watching it on the field. I'm not sure if they had three in possession or two, but they definitely were getting the penalty for possessing and that's more than two while scoring. This would be... There was a match over at East Super Regionals that was decided by the same penalty, which is kind of interesting. It wasn't yeah. really a penalty at first that I thought would be really having a huge effect on the game. Definitely. Yeah, penalties seem to be a, an integral part of this game, it pains me to say, but like everyone, everyone just... Is racking up penalties. I know that in our semifinals, we got 130 points of penalties because uh, we we didn't communicate with our alliance partner and they had collected two when we finished off their crypto box and they kept the two in their robot. So oh. that sort of, uh, they just That's... kept it in for like 20 seconds. And they were balanced, but they still had those glyphs in their robot. So it was... <laughs> Ugh, but, that's tough. Yeah. You can see Redneck over here scoring their first relic really, actually really impressively fast. Yeah. And Data Force grabbing their second one. Oof. It looks like <laughs> that was quite something. Um, yeah. It looks like that match. Can, let's see. Aside from penalties, I believe that R Rise knocked off both Jules and Autonomous, and not did not oh did yeah, not yeah, leave yeah. their color. Um, uh, probably yep. just a lineup error or something. Yeah. No, that was just. Um... I believe it. The robot just started driving before, uh, or actually, no, it didn't. Um, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure what caused that, but it happens. It happens. Jewels are finicky. Yeah, just because it takes so little force to actually knock them off, and so mm -hmm. any any sort of like accidental bump uh, removes any sort of scoring potential. Yeah. 
And then four ciphers looks like they were completed, and it was honestly down to penalties and relics. It was really a close match. This this division finals, like I can constantly say, like I I, I wanted to be in finals. Of course, we did, but um, <laughs> this is really this this field is very very representative of the best of the West. Like I'm not like you have you have Rise, you have Rednecks, you have Data Force. I mean, yeah, you have Data Force, you have uh, Robo Miners, like and you have Skid, like and Black Diamond, like every single one of these teams. Like not a single one is a team that I've I haven't heard of before. These are all powerhouses of the West Coast of the West region. So I'm I'm really glad that the finals really ended up this way. Absolutely. And one thing I loved about it was that the the Rise of Hephaestus and Redneck had actually been on the same alliance at the oh, yeah, yes. championship. Yes. I love this and game. they had yeah. and Eric Get you can practice. add yeah, yeah. detail. But they had oh, created okay. a six particle autonomous last year which was absolutely insane and i think we yeah. can, we've got the video of that that we can watch all right so a uh, quick backstory for this it only ever worked once the second <laughs> time we, second time we tried it it is it, this is I'm, I'm assuming this is the video this is the second yeah. time we ever tried this and is the only time it ever worked perfectly and like <laughs> none of us were expecting it and so you'll just see everyone just jump up at the end of this I'll ask one thing. So, weren't <laughs> you only you able to s- weren't you only able to start with two particles last year? Uh, you can start with. But um, basically, what I think what they did was they had the one touching rise touching. rises robot. So they yep. would start intaking uh, data. Uh, rednecks would start intaking immediately, collecting that uh, third one. Yeah, because yeah, they had smart. the intake on both sides of their robot. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize it was on both sides. Yeah, I was confused. Yeah. I only saw it on the front. It's one of the things that made them a fantastic shooter last year. Yeah. And so, yeah, so like, wow. seriously, like Redneck and Rise and Data Force were all at festival. That's something that I really want to um, put out there once again. Like, they were, these are really world class teams. These are teams that are one world. So, like, it was something yeah. that, was, uh, that was super cool for me to watch and uh, be a part of. Yeah, yeah and it was sure. cool that last year we had uh, Rise of Hephaestus and Redneck on the same alliance at West, and then they went on to win Houston. And then they yeah, were against the each other two. this year. It's yeah. really cool. That was fun. Yes, and then they'll be against right. each other. Hopefully, maybe, hopefully, in uh, yeah, we, of, we are in so. we are in separate divisions, so there's a chance. There is. So It'll this West crazy. Finals could be another preview of <laughs> the World Finals. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we can speak for the whole guest and most of the FTC community, and wish you guys good luck. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yep. So now let's draw for our awesome giveaway for the Rev Robotics <laughs> Servo Power Module. Let's bring our producer, Tyler, on to announce the winner. Thanks, Ethan. All right. Uh, last chance to get in uh, for the Rev Robotics Power Module. Make sure you stop by their booths. If you're going to the championships and say hi, let them know that you saw their uh, uh, power module on FTC Live because then they'll give us more stuff, guys. That's what we want. We want more stuff. So make sure you tell them to give us more stuff. And Greg, if you're listening, give us more stuff. So, with yeah, that please, said, Greg. <laughs> uh, with that said, we'll go ahead and do the drawing. We are going to take a couple questions afterwards. So make sure you take out first updates now. If you do have any questions, uh, congratulations. Uh, the winner is going to be Albert Fom, A L B E R T F O M. Congratulations. <laughs> do we know who that is? Somebody laughs. So. Oh, maybe I not. believe it's Albert from Omega, the Iowa team. Maybe. Albert, is that correct? Well, we'll find out if it is. Uh, yes. Please, please, please shoot me a private message on Twitch. I will need your name and mailing info so we can get that out to you. Or if you are going to the championships, one of the two, we can deliver it to you at championships. Congratulations, and thanks for following First Updates Now. All right, so we're going to get into some questions. So if you have any questions, please, 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 in the next minute or two, tag at First Updates Now with them, questions or comments, I guess. So our first question comes from FTC team uh, 13752. Uh, how does lighting affect autonomous this year, considering the jewels and view marks are opaque, unlike the uh, beacon LEDs? So I think we've only ever had a problem with sort of lighting on our view mark once, and that was mostly due to these field perimeters being really scratched up and the event lighting kind of reflected off of it. Otherwise, they seem to be really nicely not lighting related for us, at least. 
Yeah, I would I would agree with that because um like there are certain instances where like there would be a problem, but like compared to last year, and I think this question like is sort of trying to talk about Minimate Park a little bit, about how like Minimate, the lighting condition gets all messed up and all that. Um I think that compared to last year, this year won't be an issue. Um because seriously, like the, the jewels are a color. It's not like yes. they're the, the beacons which are like not really a color like somewhat a color <laughs> that you can't tell if there's too much light it's like that was a mess like but like this is like uh, well i mean it wasn't a mess it was it was a nice it was a nice thing that didn't work out too well because of various issues but the jewels this year i think is a very creative solution because they want i think first really wanted that red and that blue that teams detect and by taking away this lighting component by taking away this battery eating machine um and having something more mechanical it was it was a really creative solution to this problem yeah, so um, our next question, actually, I think he wanted to talk about this before we ended the show. Hey, Nick, are you going to Houston, and where can people find you? Yes, I am. Um, I will be uh, game announcing. They, I haven't officially been told which division I'll be on, but last year I was put on Jemison, and I suspect I will be again this year. So you can um, check me out. I'll have red hair. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Can't wait to see. Um so we have another question, actually the same question from last show. How have uh, your expectations from the game changed from the reveal video until now? Um, I guess I'll answer that. I don't think I answered that on the last show. Um, to me, I thought this game was impossible when I first saw it. Um, I've never really had that feeling. I guess this is only the third game I've seen, but I was like, oh, God, this is going to be crazy. Um, and my team had some super complex, crazy claw design. And then we saw the flipper and uh decided to go off that so um thank you to um nc, NC gears. gears yeah it was nc gears that we saw for posting that video you definitely i don't know if saved our season is the right word but allowed us <laughs> to get a head start on a better robot design um anyone else have any thoughts yeah yeah i, I mean i think like, go ahead oh um so i definitely expected that the game would be sort of beaten a little bit quicker and that there would be a lot more defense emerging earlier during the season, but it actually seems to have come really at the Super Regionals, where teams really started breaking the game and playing defense to compensate. I expected that earlier. Uh, definitely, like, Autonomous definitely kind of exceeded expectations with, like, what gluten-free and teams like them are able to do, where they're getting, like, consistent, like, five to six Glyph Autonomous programs. Like, that's just... That's insane. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> Anybody else have any thoughts? Um, I mean, I uh, personally, like, I'll just try to keep it quick. I've been talking, like, every time. But, like, um, I, I definitely thought that compared to, like, the previous years, this year, um, this, this year would be a bit easier. Um, and I think the reason is because the elements were larger. Um, the scoring potential was less like um like uh, my first year was cascade effect and like like looking back on it, it still seems pretty easy but like lifting your robot li lifting something like 120 centimeters um and and being uh, stable at that height and then uh, being able to like uh, climb i i sorry um in block party being able to like climb with with another robot all of these tasks seemed extremely like yikes um even relic uh, re rescue was just like ah oh, no that's that's hard but this year it was like, okay, there's nothing that's going to be extensively difficult here. This is going to be a game that's de de determined based on efficiency more than anything. Because every team is going to be able to um, do these all the tasks. So now it's based on the efficiency. And that's why, like, um, it really, it was, I felt that it was going to be easier. But I felt that at the same time, it was going to be a different um, strategy that we would have to go through to be successful. Um, yes, we have one more question for Olivia. Uh, this question is from Cookie Hero 289 uh, Olivia, how to tape measure? My mentor keeps on telling me it's impossible, but clearly he's wrong. <laughs> oh. Um. Oh, in what case do you want to tape measure? Depends, because we actually, before, um, well, we actually have several tape measures on our robot compared to previous years. We have <laughs> tape measures used for, um, helping us align cubes and helping us to deliver them into the boxes because it straightens it out. We just have it on um, a plate that rises up. <laughs> I'm so bad at describing this right now. But uh, 
for the uh, if if you want a better description, I have someone here that can describe it for you. Sure. Okay. Um, That's my other member. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. Yeah, there you go. Hello. Can you hear me? Hi, uh, I'm Taylor Ann. I'm the lead builder on the team. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, could you repeat the question for me? Um, yeah, so the question is how to how to tape measure uh so how do you uh, how do you build your tape measure how does it work um what are some tips for teams trying to figure out how to use tape measures so the one key thing with tape measures is if the thing that you're guiding is not sturdy the tape measures will buckle and they'll just come up and they'll come out and they won't push anything the reason we actually chose tape measures is because they're about two to three times faster than the traditional uh stringed elevator system that we normally use with the drawer slides um, our relic system probably weighs a little bit over 20 pounds right now because we have so many drawer slides on it. Um, yeah. But it allows it to go really fast and it's really sturdy. So if it accidentally hits anything, it doesn't snap in half. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> and then um, can you explain how you power that? Like, how do you direct power to the uh, tape master? Excuse me. So we actually uh, use two wheels and we wedge the two or we have a roller and a wheel, and we wedge the tape measure between the wheel and the roller, and we simply spin the wheel, which pushes the tape measure out and pulls it in as need be. Cool. Awesome. awesome. Uh, Ethan, it looks like you have, uh, I don't know if you have a girlfriend or just a big super fan in the chat. Uh, <laughs> Agflake seems to really love you. You're her, okay. you're her savior or his Good savior. Wait, know. what? <laughs> Uh, My Ethan. chat is actually dead, so I can't see any of this, but it sounds oh. fantastic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what? All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's okay, Olivia. We'll tell you after. So, oh. okay. Uh, I want to say thank you to everyone who is um, helping make this show possible. Uh, if you would like, if you like what we do here on Fun, all that we ask is that you click that follow button and invite others to come watch fun shows, including FTC Live, and be a part of this amazing community. Please consider donating, giving bits, or subscribing so we can keep providing great content for you. On behalf of myself and Ethan and our producer, Tyler, working behind the scenes, I would like to thank you for tuning in. Thank you to all of our amazing guests for providing their expertise, and thank you to all of our moderators in the chat. If you are watching live, our... Yep, never mind. That was for the last show. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, signing off for FTC Live, I'm Nathan. See you guys. See you. Bye. Bye.